Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has launched their new CLI tool called Gemini CLI. Gemini CLI is basically their own take on something like Claude Code. It is fully open source and free as well. Now, let's talk about what Gemini CLI actually is and what makes it interesting. Gemini CLI is essentially a command line AI agent designed to bring Google's Gemini models directly into your terminal. It acts as a coder that can edit files, write code, and basically do everything that Claude Code does. It's more for terminal users, as this is the kind of tool that's meant to slot right into your terminal workflow. The idea is very simple. You get direct, lightweight access to Gemini's capabilities, all from your shell with support for a wide range of tasks beyond just coding. It is built upon TypeScript, which is interesting to see because Google could have used Go, since that's mainly their own language for developing lightweight alternatives to Claude. But that isn't the case here, which is interesting to note. The tool is open source under the Apache 2.0 license, so you can inspect the code, contribute, or even adapt it for your own needs. One of the standout features here is the free tier. So, it is included under Google's Code Assist program, which means that it gives you access to Gemini 2.5 Pro. The context window is huge, up to 1 million tokens, which is more than enough for almost any project. The usage limits are quite high for a free offering about 60 model requests per minute, and up to 1,000 requests per day, which should be more than enough for most individuals. And it is the Pro model, which is as good as Sonnet, if not better. If you need to run multiple agents or want to use specific models, you can opt for a paid plan or use an API key from Google AI Studio or Vertex AI. But for most developers, the free tier will be sufficient, especially during this preview period. Now, let's talk about what you can actually do with Gemini CLI. You can query and edit large code bases, even those that go beyond the 1 million token context window. You can generate new apps from PDFs or sketches, thanks to Gemini's multimodal capabilities. There's support for automating operational tasks like querying pull requests or handling complex Git rebases. It also integrates with tools and MCP servers, so you can add new capabilities, including media generation with Imagen, Vio, or Lyria. Another useful feature is the built-in Google search grounding. You can fetch web pages and provide real-time external context to the model, which is handy for research or fact-checking. Gemini CLI is also extensible. It supports the Model Context Protocol, MCP, bundled extensions, and customizable prompts and instructions. You can automate tasks and integrate Gemini CLI into your existing scripts, making it suitable for both interactive and non-interactive use. The project is hosted on GitHub, and Google encourages contributions whether that's reporting bugs, suggesting features, or submitting code improvements. You'll find a typical open source workflow with issues, discussions, and a security policy. Now, let's move on to how you can set this up and use it as well. But before we do that, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.0 Flash, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground, where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly, with higher tiers available 
if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. To use it, you'll need to have Node installed on your system. Once that's done, you have a couple of options for running Gemini CLI. The quickest way is to use npx and just run this command, or you can install it globally with this command. Also, if you have ever installed the Gemini code tool by a third-party developer that I covered before, then uninstall it because this and that use the same command to run. So, just do that with pip uninstall Gemini code. Anyway, once installed, you can pick a color theme for the interface. Unfortunately, there's no cat poochin theme. The closest to that is Dracula, so you can use that. Then, when prompted, sign in with your account or use an API key. This will activate the free tier, giving you those generous usage limits I mentioned earlier. But again, for most people, the free tier should be more than enough. Anyway, now, this has some slash commands. Let me show them to you. So, the first slash command is about, which just shows you the current version of Gemini CLI and similar information. It also has an auth option to switch to API key-based authentication or change accounts and things like that. You also get bug for reporting bugs, and you also have the chat options. With the chat option, you get three subcommands, list, save, and resume. This is basically for sessions. You can save a session with a name and then resume this session when you quit and come back, which is good. But you can't make a fresh new session without saving the first one, quitting, and then coming back, which is pretty inconvenient for me because I do that a lot. Anyway, you also get the clear option to clear the conversation or context. Then, you have the compress option to compress context, or basically summarize all the context, and only let a summarized context remain, freeing up context for further conversations. You also have the docs option to quickly open Gemini CLI docs. You also have the editor option to select which kind of editor you want it to open files in, if you want to look at a file or something like that. Then there's the MCP option to see which MCPs you have configured. You can configure it in a config file as well. Then you have memory. Memory is basically the init command of Claude, and it just makes a Gemini markdown file for the coder to reference some custom rules or coding patterns and things like that. You have three subcommands with it. Refresh, Add, and Show. Refresh is something that you'll need to do first, and then Add will come in handy if you need it to remember something. You can just add that here, and it will get added to the markdown file. You can also use the Stats command for checking how many tokens you have used and things like that. Now that's all the subcommands, but let's try to use it as well. So, using it is simple. I have this repo here. This is a simple benchmarking app, and I'm going to ask it to add a light theme option to it. Now it will go ahead and start to make changes. It is very similar to Claude Code in how it does things. It can run shell commands, use MCPs, do file edits, and so on. And it is optimized for the Gemini models with free credits, which makes it pretty amazing. In a bit, it gets done, and it did everything quite well. The limits for this are awesome, and it actually works amazingly well without any issues. So, that is good. It all depends on what you like the best. I like this, but it seems less polished as of now, which is something that will improve over time. And since it is open source, we can always get forks that make it work with other models, or allow other things like Klein to use the free tier that we get with this, which will be pretty awesome when that happens. Go ahead and give this a try, and let me know what you guys think about this as well. Overall, it's pretty cool.
Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.